Welcome back to my channel. So today I will be doing an ABG makeup transformation. Just in case you're unsure of what an ABG is or stands for, here's the definition that I found online. Asian baby girl, a young Asian woman who displays stereotypical traits such as enjoying clubbing, wearing excessive makeup and tattoos, drinking bubble tea, wearing revealing clothes, etc. As you can probably tell from a lot of my videos, I've lived my life feeling really fearful of what others thought of me. So what often ended up happening was I just became who everyone else wanted me to be. A lot of my journey right now is still about figuring out who I am and how I want people to see me. An ABG transformation might seem like no big deal, just another makeup transformation, but for me, this is a big deal. I am allowing myself to look in a way that I've never really wanted people to see me as before. I'm actually gonna make this video a chit chat, get ready with me style video so that while I'm transforming myself, I also share with you about my journey as a woman and how my relationship with myself, my outer appearance and my body has changed and transformed throughout my life. I have all my makeup here on this small little nightstand. So grab some coffee, tea, water, whatever, and let's get started. All right, so I just started off with putting some moisture on my skin. I really hope I do a good job of balancing makeup and talking because I am the worst at multitasking. I'm gonna put on some primer first. So the first time I thought about doing an ABG transformation was when I was watching one of my favorite YouTubers, Michelle Choi, do an ABG transformation. And I distinctly remember watching it and being like, wow, she looks so good and I would never do that. I didn't really think about it for a few days. And then I was video chatting with my friends and I think we were talking about different influencers on Instagram. And one of my friends was like, would you ever pose like this? I think that influencer was posing in a pretty sexy way. And immediately I was like, no, I would never do that. And that's when I paused. I was like, why is my gut reaction? Like, no, I would never do anything in public that makes me look sexy or like hot or something. I just like thought about it for a few days and I was like, I think there's something to unpack about this. So I just started going back into my past and really thinking about what my relationship to sexiness and hotness was throughout my life. Cause that kind of mindset I have towards this idea of being sexy was learned somewhere. It's not like I was just born one day and was like, I'm never gonna post a picture of myself in a bikini or I'm never gonna look like an ABG on camera. I'm just gonna use a powder foundation cause I literally don't have a liquid foundation. So growing up, I actually had pretty low self-confidence, especially about my appearance because I grew up going to an elementary school where I was pretty much like one of the only Asian American girls there. So I definitely felt really out of place. None of the boys I had crushes on ever liked me back. Honestly, I don't even think they knew I existed. So yeah, I basically went through my whole kindergarten to sixth grade experience feeling completely unattractive and really behind too, because I went through puberty a lot later than most of the girls at my school. So I looked like a little kid when they were all starting to look like young women. I did not feel cool or hot at all in any way. But then middle school to early high school was like when I finally blossomed. So from seventh grade to 12th grade, I went to a very competitive school, which was stressful. But the bright side was that all my friends were Asian American. So I no longer felt like I didn't fit. And all of my guy friends were Asian American too. So I was like, I don't even have a chance. Man, seventh grade, I found out for the first time that a boy liked me and I was on top of the world. I never knew this day would come that a boy would literally have a crush on Serena. And suddenly I thought to myself, oh, Okay, so all of a sudden I'm attractive and if I keep this up, maybe more boys can like me. I spent so much of my middle school years and early high school years just like flirting with boys because I was just so desperate to prove to myself that I could get them to like me. Without even realizing it, I just used boys and their affections as a way to make up for 
the self-worth that I didn't have. Starting mid high school, I started attending my church's youth group and that was really the first time that I was immersed in Christian culture. So while I was used to dressing up, trying to look hot or something to get people's attention, now all of a sudden I'm in a community where they teach you about your intrinsic worth as a human being. I love that because then I started learning how to really work on my character and my relationship with people and actually learn to love people versus always constantly asking, do they like me? Do they think I'm pretty? So that was really awesome. But the challenge that came with that too is that um, with just the Christian circles I was in, it was quite conservative. It was like, holy was the new hot. Serena is like a chameleon. So Serena was like, yeah, I can adjust to that. I don't need to look hot. I can just be like the holiest of holies. So yeah, all throughout like late high school and college, I shared in my journey video that I was extremely involved in Christian communities. And so I was constantly in a culture that made me feel like trying to look hot was a really bad thing or like a shameful thing. But trying to be holy, pure, and innocent was a really great thing. Also, to add to that, in late high school and college, I started gaining weight and I just didn't know how to have a healthy mindset towards it. I saw it as a really, really bad thing and so I started feeling a lot of shame. I think I had just internalized the message that skinny is pretty and curvy is not. Outer appearance and sexiness was like not a priority for me, not only because my community shamed it, but also because I felt like I couldn't attain it even if I wanted to. Okay, I think my baking has been too long, so I need to get that off. Oh. I still remember there was one time I was with my community leadership team and we were just casually talking about like what kind of merch we wanted for the following school year, like maybe a t-shirt or something. And I was like, ooh, maybe we can get booty shorts. And one of our leaders looked at me and was like, Serena, do you think that's edifying? And I was like, I, that moment is just like imprinted into my memory because it was a moment where I felt such intense shame and embarrassment that I had the audacity to talk about booty shorts. So, oh, oh, that's super gold. Okay, we're gonna make it work. Oh my goodness. And then you add in the whole like weird dating, no sex before marriage, intense culture and I think it was just too much. One time, a guy confessed to me and told me that he liked me, but the weird part was he said like, you're the first girl that I liked where I didn't feel any sexual attraction or like sexual temptation towards. And I was like, that's a good thing, right? Like, I should be proud of that, that I'm like the one girl that was able to make him like me without making him lust for me. It just like reinforced the fact that it's like so wrong to be sexually attractive. I don't even know. I, I don't even have words for it, to be honest. So yeah, I spent my college years within that culture like a chameleon, trying my very best to live up to those standards. And it almost felt like I just lost a huge chunk of my youth because I spent it feeling so fearful of what my community would think of me if I did certain things. I never paused to ask myself what I wanted to do or how I wanted to look. At age 22, I finally drank for pretty much the first time because on my 21st birthday, I was still on the like, I'm so holy, right? So I literally took like one sip and I was like, that's good, I'm good. I'm happy with one sip. I'm not trying to get wasted or something. And I just always felt like I was on this pedestal or like I was so awesome because I didn't care for drinking or for 
dating or I don't know what. Anyway, so at 22, I had my first real experience of drinking. My friends took me clubbing for the first time and I just loved it because it was the one space where I felt like I could move my body and feel beautiful and cool and sexy. 22 to 25 were the years that I enjoyed clubbing so much and yet I also felt like it was kind of like a secret. I felt like a lot of people in my community wouldn't approve of it or they would think differently about me if they found out I was clubbing. So I remember like anytime I talked about clubbing, whether it was on social media or just in conversation, I always avoided the word clubbing and I always used dancing. I said, oh, I just, I love dancing. But that was just like such an understatement. I liked clubbing. I literally liked clubbing. I liked the atmosphere. I liked the drinks. I liked the sexy moves, the intense beats. You know, I liked clubbing, but I was so afraid to say that because of how it would make me look in front of other people. Dancing came off as so much more innocent, so much more blissful. Oh, she loves dancing, that's so wholesome. Oh, but clubbing, oh, that's dirty. So just think about all that pressure I was carrying and then my transition to married life. It was just honestly kind of bizarre. Actually, before I talk about married life, even as a college student, I would sometimes get invited to bridal showers and it was just like the most bizarre thing because we don't talk about sex, we don't talk about being sexy, but then all of a sudden you enter into this room called a bridal shower and it's like this magical room where everyone in the room, it's like a known fact that we're allowed to talk about sex. But once we leave this room, we're like, we don't talk about it anymore. But in the safety of this room, we can talk about sex, we can give the bride really raunchy underwear, even like, I don't know, candies that they can wear, different flavors of stuff. And I was just like, wait, what? Am I entering into like the secret club where Christian women are actually allowed to be sexy? But then outside of this one room, the bridal shower room, no one talks about it. So I was just like really confused. So then come my relationship with Alan and making the transition was actually, I thought it'd be really natural, but it actually, now that I think about it, it was pretty confusing and complicated, especially in our first like six months of being intimate. I just remember feeling so awkward, so embarrassed to show that I was enjoying it. I was used to staying away from sexuality. And so making that jump to now being a sexual person and actually showing it was just like, I didn't know what to do with myself. I remember feeling so excited about these beautiful pieces of lingerie that my girlfriends bought me for my bridal shower and I would just like dream about how I would wear it and I would feel super cool and pretty but what would happen on the day of is I would wear it and I'd be like I do not know how to function in this am I supposed to look like I'm sexy and like I'm trying to seduce you when I'm literally taught my whole life that I should not seduce anyone. Oh. So that's really been a journey too of me really owning it and learning to feel confident. That is something I'm learning now as a 26 year old married woman. So as you can hopefully tell from my story, this is kind of where it comes full circle because Serena, the girl who was always so scared to feel or look sexy, to be seductive or like clubbing, dress a certain way, all those things is now doing an ABG transformation, which is like, to me, like the epitome of a sexy Asian girl, you know? So yeah, this is really empowering for me. Thank you for coming along this journey with me. So I'm gonna do my brows. Okay. Do this. One time I was at a church camp and I was one of the leaders there and we were with I think some high schoolers and one of my co-leaders was talking to me about going to the gym. I think she asked me, what's your favorite muscle to work out? And I was like, definitely glutes. And she was like, oh my gosh, me too. And we were going on about how we just genuinely love working out our legs and our glutes because I mean, it made us feel thick. I distinctly remember in the midst of talking about leg and glute day, immediately my mind went to, oh no, 
who's listening? There's high schoolers in the room. Are they allowed to hear their leaders talk about how exciting it is to grow your butt and your legs? I don't know, I'm just stunned. I think a high school girl should definitely feel the freedom and the empowerment to work on her butt and her legs if she wants to. That is such a beautiful part of growing up and learning to enjoy your body, grow your strength, grow your curves. I just had so much internalized shame about bodies in general that I immediately got so scared. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really hope none of my students talk about it or like bring it up to their parents. Ugh, that was that. When I was planning for my trip to Vegas with my girls for my bachelorette, I bought this white dress that I just absolutely loved. I bought it online and so when it came, I tried it on and it just fit my body perfectly. There was a perfect flare so it flattered my body shape and the neckline was like perfect so that it made my chest area look really good. And then to top it off, I'm actually gonna show you, I found this type of bra called, <laughs> called New Bra and basically it gives your chest a lot of support even without straps and so you can wear strapless stuff and you'll feel extremely supported and so i just felt like that situation was like perfect and made me feel so beautiful and honestly it made me feel sexy when i was wearing it in vegas but the sad thing was i remember taking a picture of myself i think there was a part of me that wanted to post it on social media as a way of like celebrating right but i didn't i didn't really show it to any because I felt like even a little bit of cleavage was too much to show the world like they would see it and they'd be like who does she think she is why would she show so much cleavage so yeah just in light of this whole theme we're going for here in this journey of empowerment I'm telling myself today that I'm not gonna be ashamed if I have cleavage I'm not gonna be ashamed if I have cleavage oh, didn't realize I carried that much shame around cleavage so I realized there's so many steps I forgot, but I need to put on some blush. I'm gonna go for a more burnt orangey look. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of makeup, so I just have this eyeshadow palette and it has a beautiful like burnt orange color. So I'm just gonna use that and pretend it's blush. We can all pretend here, right? You know, there's still a part of me, like the internalized shame part of me that is thinking about this video right now and being like, do I want a high schooler or a middle schooler to come across my video and hear me talk about these things? Is this too inappropriate for them? I can't believe I'm thinking that. If you are a younger girl, maybe middle school, high school, whatever, I hope you know that your body is so beautiful and your curves, your cleavage, your booty, everything looks awesome. And you don't need to be ashamed to think it's awesome, to express it, to feel sexy, or to want to feel sexy. I think that is a normal part of growing up as a woman. That exploration, that discovery, I think that's all part of the process. Avoiding it does us no good. Um, highlighter on. I keep forgetting that I didn't do my outer corner, so I'm gonna make that part, that part up real quick. It is so hard to multitask. I broke so many makeup rolls today, but it's okay. I was busy having my girl talk. Oh, I honestly don't even know how to blend it. Uh, actually, it's looking pretty good. Okay, that looks good. That looks really good. A little bit of the red underneath my eye. Now, finally, for the exciting part, the eyelash. I hope you're resonating with this video so far and I feel like the standards, the unspoken rules, and just messages that women have to deal with. I think it's pretty common just in our society in general. I don't think it's just a church girl thing. There's a lot of stuff that women just internalize. So many messages telling us how to behave, how to look, how to act. Sometimes it just feels easier to give in to those standards and rules so that people don't judge us.
Ooh, it's working. Oh, I can't breathe. That was such a bad application. If I went clubbing like this, it would for sure fall off. Oh goodness. Oh, but ooh, look at the difference. Yeah. All right, let's do the other one now. The hardest part about eyelashes, they look so good, but I'm constantly, constantly stressed that they're gonna fall off. Wouldn't that be so embarrassing when you're like at the club, dancing, looking so good, you think you're hot, and then you realize the whole time your eyelash was just like dangling off? Probably my worst nightmare. I think it looks good. I don't even know. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the darker color. Okay, so I'm gonna curl my hair, give myself that full makeover look. 